of the USS Los Angeles in 1 3 50th scale by a hobby boss. This is my second submarine kit, having learned a few lessons in the Akula, which you can also find in this channel. Looking forward to it, it's a nice, quick, simple build, while we uh, ramp up to some more serious projects coming up soon. The kit itself is, you know, quite small, but generous in terms of uh, there's one and a half hulls in here, depending on which variant you want to build. This Cold War sub was developed by the US Navy between 1972 and 1996 at almost a billion dollars per sub in 90s money. 62 were built, and there's 24 still active. I just saved you a trip to Wikipedia, you're very welcome. As with any naval build, the first thing I'm going to do is assemble the stand so that you have a platform to work from. Then it's onto the conning tower, along with the diving rudders, periscope, etc. There's a few fiddly bits in here as well as a little bit of etch. So obviously I'm going to clean up the plastic as it comes off the sprue. I don't think it's necessary to show any more of that work from here on. I'm using AK's thin cement to fuse all the plastic and regular CA glue to attach the etch to the plastic. bits done. I'm going to cement the hole, sand it down a bit and of course attach the conning tower. The reason I'm sanding is the plastic has a bit of an orange peel texture to it so I just want to smooth that down because it betrays the scale somewhat. With that done, it's down to the diving and directional rudders as well as some fiddly bits that go on top. Weirdly, the top directional rudder doesn't fit in the existing hole in the hull, so I had to give it a little bit of help with my Dremel. Other than that, everything seems to fit together pretty well. Okay, with basic assembly complete, it's time for my beloved Vallejo plastic putty. If you haven't seen me use this stuff before, basically just apply the putty wherever you need to take the edge off or fill a gap, and then swipe over that with a damp Q-tip. Then leave that to dry and sand down if you need to. sanding inevitably uh, some detail is going to get lost uh, so I'm scoring a few hull lines back onto the plastic very carefully less is more definitely especially at this scale okay finally it's time to paint I'm going to start lighter to darker 
which means hull red first. This is Vallejo's model color, which needs a 50-50 mix with airbrush thinners. And while that dries, I'm going to paint the propeller with Vallejo Glass Black Primer ahead of its metallic coat. Time to prep for the black layer. And here I'm using Tamiya's masking tape, which is pretty safe to use with a thin acrylic paint layer. In hindsight, I should have done two layers of the, the whole red, just to protect the paint job from any paint peeling off once we remove the masking tape. The Samir stuff is not what worries me, it's this paper tape that tends to do some damage. This is why I've laid down some strips, just to reduce the contact area with the paper in the model. Now we're going to spray some model in matte black. After about 4 or 5 hours it's time to take off the masking tape which is always very rewarding and see how we're looking. As you can see unfortunately that, that paper tape I was worried about did strip a few specks of paint off. We should be fine with a few touch ups. The paper tape also left some gum residue on the paint job, but once we get to weathering and varnishing, that'll disappear. So, after a few touch-ups, while that dries, I'm going to uh, finish painting the stand. And then I'm going to seal in the paint job with a gloss varnish, which is hidden behind this terrible camera work. The gloss varnish is of course in preparation for our decals. Once again I'm using Vallejo's decal fix and softener. It's a slightly different uh, routine from some of the competing products. Apply fix to where decals are going to be on the model and let that dry for a few minutes. Then just before you apply the decal, activate it with some water. The fix acts as an adhesive as well as a very gentle softening agent to my understanding. Once the decals have had some time to dry, normally about two or three minutes, it's time for the softening agent. You may have seen me use this in some of my other builds, but basically what you want to do is apply a film over the over the dry decal. The stuff is going to soften quite aggressively, and but it does form a thin film layer around the decal. So what you want to do is then after it's applied, take a damp brush and dissolve the edge of that film basically the boundary of your layer of softening agent and this will help integrate it. After about 10 or 20 minutes you'll see the, the decals um, should be soft and aligned to um, your model quite nicely. It's really pretty good stuff compared to what I've seen from other manufacturers. Anyway it's time for a wash. So here I'm using Vallejo's uh, white model wash. I'm basically just going to paint it on quite loosey-goosey let it flow into all the crevices and dry for about five minutes. Five minutes to wrap and now I'm using Q-tip dipped in Vallejo airbrush thinners just to remove excess wash, leaving the pigment in the crevices. 
but also it's okay to uh, to make a little bit of a mess with this stuff. All the kind of residue and salt and ice that would would settle into the deck of a submarine would look pretty organic and natural, much like what this finish is going to give you. Again, I'm going to seal in that work with a varnish, this time a matte varnish. 50% mix of airbrush thinners. The reason I'm doing matte is I'm about to do an oil weathering treatment, which I prefer doing on a matte finish. For that, I'm going to paint the periscopes and antennas, etc. down some odorless thinners on a panel and using uh, Abtalon oils I'm gonna dab color on and then use a separate clean brush to blend that color in. So what follows is a time lapse of the full weathering process with oils in case someone finds that of any value. I'm going to use the time to tell you and describe what's coming up straight after which I'll hope you stick around for because I think it's quite interesting. My day job is a visual effects artist in the film industry and I'm using this channel as an opportunity to bring my two skill sets together. So what I've done is filmed the finished model on a green screen and integrated that into a CGI ocean scene which is something I just happen to be learning about at the, at the moment. It's far from perfect but it's fun and pretty interesting and I hope you'll stick around to have a look. Also, if you're interested, uh, feel free to check out my Patreon where I'm going to have 3D files available as such as the nameplates are designed and printed in the final shot. I'm creating similar nameplates for all my naval models and of course they'll be available too. I'm also making all the instructions for every kit I build available there including some colorized ones whenever there's a, a complex paint scheme that needs consideration and planning. Lastly, I'll also be putting tutorials up on my Patreon as I work through these projects, such as um, realistic dioramas, wiring LEDs together to bring these fun projects to life. So back to the model. We're almost done with the oils over here. Lastly, I'm gonna seal in all this work with a matte varnish coat. I tried Vallejo's matte first, wasn't thrilled with it. I needed something even more dull. That, and that's when I discovered to me as flat clear aerosol, which is extremely dull and perfect for a submarine. I have though since discovered that Vallejo does have an ultra matte varnish, which I will be testing in future. In any case, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel. I appreciate you all and see you soon.